and today's gratuitous food shot is tonjiru. Hi guys, thanks for being here once again. If you've seen my recent Nara and Kyoto videos, you know that I've pretty much fallen head over heels in love with traditional Japanese stone lanterns. I want them all. So I decided it was time to get my own. Now this was not an easy task. These things are huge, often very old, and if you want a nice big one, it's probably going to weigh about a ton. Maybe a little more or a little less. And sure, you can get cute little ones, but what I really wanted for my garden was a nice big fella, you know. I feel like what makes these things impressive is being nice and big. So I bought a lantern online. I actually bought two. And for a real bargain price. You know, these things get pretty crazy price tags from specialised services, so... Well, I certainly didn't pay that. Or that. Blimey. And, well, in the pictures from the cellar, you know, they didn't look that big. See? I mean, yeah, you can see exactly how big they are. He's put actual measuring sticks in there, but somehow in my head, these seemed small and manageable. Now, I even thought maybe we could just get them in the back of the car, in pieces. Oh, no, 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 no. The seller insisted we get a small truck, so I roped in my band friends, we rented one of the little white numbers that are pretty ubiquitous here in Japan, and set our pickup day. They were meant to come and meet me and take me to Nerimaku in a three-seater, but I was betrayed. Okay, so I guess the truck the others got is only for two people, so um, they're going ahead and I'm getting the train. Now, this all happened a few months ago now. I'm not very fast at making these videos, forgive me. But yeah, shortly after I collected the stones, I started making this video, so over to my past self now with the wild hair and the wild eyes. Okay, so the last couple of days have been absolutely crazy. Uh, I've done a lot of heavy lifting and I've, I've got bruises to prove it. Can you see those? Check them out. Yeah. I've learned a lot about my friends, about how things work in Japan, about uh, the sheer amazingness of what's called a benriya-san. Benri being Japanese for convenient or handy, so this basically meaning a, a handyman, a professional handyman. But yeah, even now the story is only about halfway done and there's a whole lot more that's got to happen. Oh, the train took forever. But here we are in sunny Nerimaku. It's an interesting place with a lovely park. Unfortunately, I don't have time to check that out because I've really got to get to this place. Uh, I think the guy wanted us there a lot earlier. So when I arrived at the house of the seller, Shinoda-san, my friends were already there and there was a lot of heavy equipment set up. They were hoisting these huge, heavy stones up into the air. What are we doing? Ooh, nice. Now in the back of my mind, I'd always thought that, you know, if I went there and things were too huge, too impractical, that there was no way we were going to do this, I could just say, oh look, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I wasted your time, but yeah, I can't accept these and walk away. But no, no, Shinoda-san had decided he was getting rid of these stones and he was going to do it today, no matter what we had to say about it. It would have been too rude to refuse after seeing everything he'd set up and, you know, I, I, I was pretty happy to see everything going so well, to be honest, but um, it did cause some problems down the line. Uh, complicated. Okay, back to me in the present day. I was so much less jaded back then. So we didn't exactly get the full story of why Shinoda-san was selling his lanterns for this bargain price, uh, even though he was very friendly and jovial and he and his wife served us iced tea which was lovely on this hot day. But I think we pieced it together. Now, they had this pretty large house in a desirable neighbourhood with a substantial garden that I was totally jealous of. But there was someone else there while we were removing the lanterns and he was wearing a suit looking like he was doing a basic survey of the place so most likely what was happening was that Shinoda-san had decided to 
sell the garden to a developer who probably wanted to throw up an ugly box with 10 or 15 apartments in that space. That's what usually happens. I mean, sure, it makes a lot of good economic sense, but it's a shame to lose these traditional spaces, I think. And it's happening so much in Tokyo, not just in gardens, but everywhere you go, nice old single-family houses keep getting torn down to make way for 10 or 15 tiny box apartments in one block that can be Rented, of course, for far more than one property. And while Japanese houses aren't really built to last, so most of them do have to come down eventually. In this case, though, presumably the development company told him that he'd have to get rid of the huge heavy stones before the sale could go through. So he looked for people who'd take them away, and he charged only very little for the lanterns themselves. Let's be honest here, I was prepared to flake. And clever Shinoda-san, was prepared for me to want to flake. So he'd brought in his company workers and a big old hoist and frame and well pretty soon the lanterns were loaded up on the back of our van. Here's our commemorative photo which I find hilarious. I enjoy how I'm there looking like Andy Cap. So with a truckload of stones loaded up I then had a bit of a problem. How would we get them off the truck? The others vetoed all my bright ideas of stuff like piling up mattresses and pushing them off the back. I still think that would have worked fine. But in the end, we actually found a Benria san to help us. Thankfully, because we were at that point wondering how much it would cost to keep the van hired for days until someone would help. So. This Ben Ryasan came late in the evening, meaning I couldn't film anything, but basically he was a small skinny guy who was made up of at least 98.8% PURE MUSCLE Because with just the four of us, and three of us maybe not exactly used to manual labour, we unloaded everything. But just the task of unloading took everything out of us. The others were not prepared to help me actually assemble the lanterns. And thus, I was left with a garden full of pieces. Heavy pieces. Just look at all of this stone. Can you believe we moved this by hand? Let's pause a little here to talk about what a stone lantern is, and to explain the history a little bit. Ishidoro came to Japan from China via Korea as part of the spread of Buddhism. Uh, though they are still heavily associated with temples and shrines in the 1500s, they were increasingly used for the gardens that were meant to be viewed during tea ceremonies. And these days, walking around Tokyo suburbs, it's quite common to see them in fancier gardens. The separation of what is secular and what is holy is not necessarily as strict here, and people often do have small shrines in their gardens. So basically what I want to say is that there's nothing taboo or inappropriate about having these lanterns in your privately owned garden. A tachidoro, or standing lantern, is made up of six parts. My first task was to get the base, or daiza, into place. These mostly stay underground, and this was the heaviest part of the standing lantern. Fortunately though, it didn't have to be lifted up, but rather buried. And like most of the pieces of stone here, I had totally underestimated it. One thing I wasn't prepared for was the sheer size and weight of this base part, so I'm going to have to do a bit more digging. My first task was to move it two meters across the garden, which I decided I could do alone using the principles of leverage, uh, which were necessary to budget even a little bit. I first hoped to roll it along using a bunch of dowels, kind of like little wheels, but they just got pushed into the earth and wouldn't roll, so that didn't work. Okay, so the, uh, the roller idea really didn't work out, but uh... I decided to use the principles of leverage to slowly move this across the garden all on my own. Oh, it's incredibly heavy. Oh, there's no way I can shift it with even both hands. But uh, leverage means I can slowly walk it forwards and uh, 
yeah, I really want to get it done tonight so that I can show the others, you know, there is a plan. Uh, I've just finished the, uh, the hardest part, which is this, this corner around the side of the pond. I'm in the home stretch now. I, I'd love to get a few of the standing stones up by dark, just to show them. <laughs> Basically, I just used leverage to walk it little by little until I could finally get it into the hole. Again, it got too dark to film anything, but I inched the base part forward little by little until finally it was swallowed up by the ground. I honestly would have liked to have gotten it perfectly level, but once it was in the hole, there really wasn't any undoing it and it seemed pretty even to me. I could get the column part of the lantern, the sow, into place by rolling and tipping it, and I felt pretty proud of what I accomplished alone. But that's where my progress hit a big wall. Inching things forward with levers, fine. Rolling them, okay. But lifting them high enough to stack? That was another question altogether. The large umbrella part at the top, in particular, was way too heavy for one person to lift. I mean, sure, maybe the world's best strongmen could deadlifted, but in case there's some doubt, I'm not one of them. I was all out of favours with my Japanese friends. The band guys had done enough and just told me to get professionals to finish the job. Uh, my other friends and work colleagues are not really the heavy lifting types and probably would have wanted to have been paid a fair bit to do strenuous lifting on their days off. I also managed to squash the tip of my finger when the top part of the other lantern just leaned on it, and I couldn't lift anything heavy after that. I did contemplate getting professionals in, or seeing if I could just hire five or six local guys to do an hour or two of heavy lifting, but then I struck on a cheaper idea, possibly a massively dumb idea. But I did it anyway. I got myself a cheap engine crane from China. It's become very clear that putting the top parts on without some kind of help is going to be pretty impossible, so today I'm putting together a crane. From here on it would be better to have it in situ. Okay, all assembled. Now I'm just going to wait for the rain to stop to get started. Now I have to say, if you decide to do this yourself and assemble a lantern of your very own, this is a really, really bad and dangerous way to do it. Don't do it this way, really. I mean, it worked out all right, but it could have been disastrous. I got an engine crane that only lifts and drops. It doesn't have lateral movement. It's also not meant to be used outdoors on soft ground, absolutely not meant to be put with legs extending over a pond, and everything I was doing was pretty much totally wrong. Really, it wasn't suitable for the job, and I'm fairly fortunate it worked out as well as it did, as well as an idiot for even trying. And by the way, professionals will generally do this with a hoist on the back of a truck, not that a truck could even access my garden, I guess conceivably from the car park on the other side of the wall. Anyway, the first thing I hoisted up was the chudai, the lower platform part, which I'd tried to lift but found myself entirely incapable of getting to the correct height without the crane. I cringe watching this footage now. It didn't seem this unsafe when I did it, but it definitely could have gone much worse. When I lifted the top part, which had to go substantially higher, I knew how the crane worked a little better and made sure the pieces were being lifted with the crane centered as much as possible over the lantern. But of course, it wasn't that simple. Oh, and of course, problems continue. Uh, the crane's jack stopped working because it was leaking a lot of oil and now the uh, the hydraulics aren't operating anymore. So um, it, it actually came not working and I managed to sort of uh, jimmy a fix for it. But that kind of, I guess, made, made it leak more. So, um, well, now I'm just waiting for more hydraulic oil and we'll see if it works after I fill it up. The next part, the hibukuro, I could actually get onto the lantern by hand. Since it's the part with the space for a flame, it's hollowed out and not especially heavy. But for the top, the umbrella part, or kasa, there was no chance whatsoever of getting that up without the crane. Fixing it was actually probably the hardest part of this whole operation. 
the problem wasn't the lack of oil, the problem was that the tiny little o-ring that was meant to be forming a vacuum at the bottom of the jack was damaged and I couldn't find any perfect replacement. Eventually I improvised a seal by cutting up coverings for crocodile clips and got the stupid thing working enough to finish the operation. Which I didn't film because, to be honest, I attempted to get the heaviest top part hoisted up so many times only for the seal to start letting the air leak out before it was raised to the level it needed to be that I gave up. So, you rejoin me with it all done and with, you'll notice, the crane in a much more sensible place relative to the lantern. Ah, it's, uh, it's hard to express exactly how much effort that really was. The final piece. The final piece is the hoju, a tear-shaped ball. These are sacred in Buddhism and are said to grant wishes, kicking off many an idea for a popular animation. And the shape has also, I believe, influenced the Japanese conception of a soul, often represented with this kind of onion shape. Or maybe that's just an obvious way of picturing a soul with fire coming out of it, I don't know. Many lanterns in this style have an ukebana, a kind of flowery support to hold up the kaen, the actual flame part, but mine didn't have one. Not sure if it originally did and it was lost or broken, but either way this is what I got. And you know what? I'm incredibly pleased with how it looks. I think it's pretty gorgeous in the light or in the dark. I'm very happy with it. But as some of you eagle-eyed viewers have no doubt noticed, the other lantern, the Yukimi Doro, was also part way through construction. The huge underlying base stone had been laid with the help of the Benriya san, and we'd put the big legs down on there too. I'd managed to wrestle the Chudai up on my own, rolling it onto bigger stone blocks until it could be twisted into place, and the Hibukuro was once again light enough to just slot into place. Just managed to put this much together by myself. Pretty proud of that. It's big. But the big challenge was the kasa, which for this style of Yukimi Doro is the biggest and heaviest and certainly most unwieldy part. And it would cause me a lot of problems. Trying to get this biggest and most cumbersome part up, I knocked over and damaged the Hibukuro part. And actually, for a while I was considering leaving it as a kind of tumble-down ruin inspired by some piles of lantern pieces we saw in Kyoto. But after having a break, I felt more determined to get things right and eventually got the crane out yet again and drained my little pond. Sorry, fishies. I did that both so that I could better position the crane and because I wanted to expand it and move it more into the center of the garden. And then I finally, finally fixed the lantern properly. Here's a little summary from back then. Hey guys, so it's been a couple of weeks since I last uh, did a video about these lanterns. Uh, since then I went on holiday. I had so many problems with the crane and I basically gave up when this one fell down and this Hibukuro part got a little bit broken. But while I was on holiday I decided to have another go at it. So this is as finished as it's ever going to be, most likely. As you can see, this one is pretty big. It's a lot bigger than I expected it to be, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Overall, this was crazy, and if you want to buy this kind of thing, I definitely recommend getting professional help. But overall, it's been a great experience, and I'm very happy with how things turned out. And I really hope I never have to use that crane again. Next step, remaking my pond. Two lanterns finally erected, I was pretty delighted and proud of myself for doing it alone once the stones were in my garden. Though again, it was a pretty dumb way of going about it and I can't say I think anyone should follow my example. I've remodeled the pond now and while the garden still needs a bit more growth from the trees and the grass, I've never stopped feeling a sense of happiness when I look at those lanterns I got on a whim and managed to transport across Tokyo in a day and piece together over months. Even if I am a bit terrified of them falling down in an earthquake now. They do fall over and they do kill people when they do. 
It's pretty scary stuff. The mine aren't going to kill anyone unless they happen to lie underneath them during a massive quake. Okay, I, I was building towards a nice neat end to the video, but now I've switched the tone to something weird. You know what? I think it would be best to leave the final words to my Japanese friends, who unambiguously think I'm crazy for doing this. あ、こう歴史を感じるね。ジャパニーズ歴史。と、あのベンリアさんはすごいじゃないですか。すごいね。あの、ミラクも<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> What was the most difficult part? The stones were too heavy. Too heavy? Too heavy. He didn't think nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no planning. No planning. Yeah. Eh,違うよ. <laughs> Me and the power, first time I, I, I we, we are there. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> no plan. No plan. <laughs> I think the lesson we should all learn from this is never to trust the words of a strange panda. And with that, I shall bid you farewell. Until next time, bye bye!